Somebody talking on their Good phone. Grief. <laughs> That's not talking on their phone. They're talking on a freaking megaphone. <laughs> what was that? Is that a droid that just walked by? Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's up, Corbin. I'm Red. And you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. Twitter it's more juicy, juicy content. Dripping out your nose. And uh, subscribe if you have not. And hit that like button, please. And today, we, we are right here, is because we are doing a movie review <laughs> of uh, the new film that just came out that no one has been yelling. No one's talking about. No one has been yelling at us for, screaming at our faces. Uh, <laughs> uh, anything like that. But uh, obviously, the reason we're in the car is because we just came out. The theater's not really close to us. And to go back home, we would pass Rick's house. And so it was yeah, just it was like, just we'll film it right after. This, and we've done this before. Yeah, you're, right you're after. Stupid baby you know, right after Pushpa. That was the last time. the yeah. last time we did it. So yep. if the shot's weird, or if the audio's weird, I'm sorry. That's, well, I don't know. What are you going to do? Gonna do? Gonna but, uh, yeah, we just watched the new uh, film, uh, Kashmir, The Kashmir Files, uh, that just came out. And then I... I Apologize, I should have pulled up all the IMDb info, uh, but you guys know who directed it and who's in it and all that kind of stuff. But um, should non-spoilers? Uh... Yeah, we'll start with non-spoilers because we know there's probably a, a lot of you who haven't seen it. So, uh -huh. and, yeah, we'll and, start with non-spoilers. And also, um, since this is a film about Kashmir, um, we are not really doing a review on... What was all accurate, even though Rick obviously knows more than I do, he did read a book uh, before we did this, which I would love to read. Um, and so he kind of knows a little bit, um, and I am went going in completely blind, so all the information I was getting was basically off the film. And so that's the perspective we're going in with, just to Correct. give you guys a heads up. But yep. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Yeah, and that's the first thing I wrote down, and I thought about this earlier, was that I would, I would probably the first time we've ever done this, is I would give a disclaimer in the fact that... Um, we, we are the least qualified to make any commentaries about Kashmir. Mm -hmm. um, what we can make commentary about is cinema and the quality of filmmaking and whether we're impacted or not by the believability, the story, the credibility of the things that we're watching on screen technically. And uh, so that being said, I think the, the biggest takeaway from all of this in the midst of this long disclaimer is the fact that you have two guys living in L.A. who, a little over three years ago, knew nothing about what happened in Kashmir, mm -hmm. who now are watching a film about it. And reading books about it. And reading yeah, books yeah, about yeah. it. So that's wonderful. So that's wonderful. But uh, I didn't have time to write a paragraph, so I'm just going to do this off the top of my head. But I do know that this is our 19th film of the year, our 141st Hindi film, and our 226th film all time. Mm. My initial thoughts... Um, of the two things that I have just put into my mind within 48 hours of each other, because the, the book that I read was Our Moon Has Blood Clots, mm -hmm. and I read it in a day. I read it yesterday, and then I saw this. Um, I don't know that it was a good idea for me to have read the book beforehand, because mm -hmm. I had some expectations of what I was going to be shown. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is, because I learned a lot from that book. Um, I, I didn't... Uh, and there's quite a few things that were taken from the book mm. that are in the film. Um, uh, we'll talk about the artistic side of things in a second. Overall, I felt, based on what limited knowledge I have about Kashmir um, and and the genocide and the exodus, the, the historicity of that and the, the actual truth and facts about how many people died and what was taking place in the villages... I I felt like the film fell short of the largeness and the scope of what this thing is. Mm -hmm. I have a lot that we can say about that, but yeah. that would be my biggest takeaway from this. On the one hand, I feel like, good grief, how can you tell people that, um, you know, how do you not see a film that's about Kashmir that could help people begin to start be to become educated about the situation. And at the same time, there's things about it that we're going to talk about that I either didn't like or had question about. So that's, that's my takeaway. Ultimately, I think it's great that we're talking about this and it was nice to see the theater full, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll share my larger thoughts as we, yeah. as we talk. Um, overall, I, I didn't, I didn't really like it. Um, and but that's not really for the story. I actually, 
I appreciate the fact that the story is being told, but also I don't honestly think I learned that much from the film. No. Um, outside, because obviously, right when the trailer came out, right when we said we were going to go see it, we got inundated with people just sending us information and, and all this kind of stuff. Right. And obviously, it was books that unfortunately I wasn't able to read, but I'm going to go read now because um, I want to learn more about the actual event. This took a like a turn of like following this kid whose parents, I'm with sorry, no spoilers. Ass, yeah, no spoilers. spoilers. Obviously, um, we'll get into it. But in a second. yeah, so it was just. I had, a, I had a problem with more of the filmmaking side and, and writing side of, of, like, not writing in terms of this event was wrong, writing in terms of dialogue. I, I don't believe your dialogue that you're, you're, you're talking to me right now. Yeah, and I, I will say this because we'll talk about the two things I will say that if I was writing the paragraph, because the thoughts are coming to me, they're formulating, as is typically the case right after I see the film. Uh, the first thing I would say is... Um, that I, the biggest thing for me, I think this was a monumentally missed opportunity mm. in terms of what it could have done could have been, cinematically. It could have done Sarda Udam. And yes, and what it could have done educationally. I think it missed the mark in both respects. And then there's some other things when we get into spoilers we'll talk about that I had some some outright disliking mm -hmm. of. Yeah, so I'm sure. with you. Ultimately, like I said in the, in the beginning, I people need to know about what happened and maybe this is a good starting, starting point, point maybe yeah. but other than that i agree with you yeah yeah so if you've already seen the film you are already probably writing hate com comments at us in the comments they don't even have to see the film to write the hate comments you, it's fine you can do what you want to do this is not about them saying doing saying anything in the film about the events i thought nor is this about our opinion of cashmere, cashmere. guys this is literally we're just talking about the this film, movie filmmaking of this film correct and that is what we were talking about <laughs> i want to clarify that even though yeah. i know the people that won't listen have already not listened no so that's what i want to say so that's our non-spoiler review is that i think maybe if you like i know i've actually have stupid babies that saw this film really really enjoyed it mm -hmm. and they said and the they theater was full they loved it and they were crying at the end and that's great that's and if great you, if that was you you loved it i'm so happy for you yep uh, me too this is me just too. too if this is cathartic for you if you happen to be a cashmere pandit yeah and this and and for you to see your story on on the screen in this way for the first time god bless you that's magnificent yeah. take people to see the film and share that experience with them yeah but uh, overall, we're going to get into the technical stuff and spoilers. Yeah, spoiler that, time. That, that, we, that, that we'll really get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Overall, I, I mean, I would say go see it. You're going to go see it if you if you haven't already um, because of the it's it's something that hasn't been told in terms of like a full fledged yet. But we do have some issues with it, and we will get into those now. Yeah. So okay. So spoiler time. Yeah. Um, my biggest issue with this film is most, it, and it was predominant throughout, was the believability of writing. And I was reminded of Venom, when you have these great actors on screen, right? Um, like let's say uh, Tom Hardy, mm -hmm. Michelle Williams, mm -hmm. right? Two mm -hmm. phenomenal Oscar-worthy actors, right? Right. And you're like, even though I, yeah, I enjoyed it. But the dialogue between them, it's like, oh my God, who wrote this? And it wasn't that bad all the time. Sometimes it was. But, like, it was like just, I knew what was coming. Right. I knew what was gonna they were going to say, and I knew what he was going to rebuttal to that and was going to say. Yeah, there was and, great predictability in the dialogue. Yeah, and, like, for somebody who, I don't know this story outside of what people have argued at me on, on at Twitter and their arguments that I've seen, that's what this film really felt like to me. Uh, this uh, person's argument... <laughs> about Kashmir, as opposed to a telling of the event of Kashmir. Uh, uh, right. 100%. It felt like almost an argument of it, which is, I'm not d debating his argument. I'm just saying that's what this film felt like. It felt like his argument yes. for Kashmir. Correct. And that's fine. And I'm not saying his argument's wrong. I'm just saying it It, it didn't feel like this was like, like Sarda Udam was about the event, the, right. the, the genocide. Or Schindler is a story of yeah. the actual... The storyline of a person's trajectory through this yeah. experience. So agreed. Like, agreed. Even like in, in Sardo Dome, we're like, we're so happy this story's actually being told and like this thing and because it was done well. I would have been just as disappointed if that was f filmed and shot this way because I've been like, I, I don't really feel like I learned anything. I don't feel like you gave the people that died justice to in the film is what I'm talking about. And I know this is a, a, a treachery subject that we're talking on but once again we're talking about the film not 
the actual event or right. things in this we, that we like think we said are at the beginning wrong. We honestly, we honestly both. The only thing we have an opinion about regarding Kashmir is how sad and heartbreaking it is to know so much tragedy and anger and hatred and bigotry has gone on there for countless, countless yeah. centuries now. All we're but saying, but especially is about the in the past. Uh, our lifetimes. What do you think about the writing? Um, the thing it wasn't so much dialogue, although I agree a hundred percent about the dialogue. I had a problem with the fact, and again, this may be because of the framing of my mindset with um, uh, "Our Moon Has Blood Clots." Man, turn that into a movie mm. because "Our Moon Has Blood Clots" is the personal testimony of a of a man who lived this. He was fourteen when it happened, mm. and so. What you get is a little, in that book, you get backstory about Kashmir, mm -hmm. enough to educate you. Because it's such a complex issue with so many different things that have happened over so many centuries. It can be, you could get, a, no joke, you could get a PhD in studies about Kashmir. It's so much information. But he takes you on a journey of his own personal life that's very similar in terms of like in this film with the going back to Kashmir with the remains of a loved one, where... I had no emotional connectivity to the personal story of Shiva in this the way I did. I was gutted with the book mm. and what this man's family, which was the microcosm of the whole, which is exactly what Schindler's List is about that particular genocide. It's not the totality of the Holocaust. It's the story of Oscar Schindler and his people that he saved from yeah. the camps. Yeah. And that small story gives you the microcosm of what was the whole. And mm -hmm. I really, I, I, the thing that was the most troubling to me in the writing was what seemed to be two things. One, a very particular framework. Like you said, it mm -hmm. was almost like this is the, the director and writer's opinion of Kashmir mm -hmm. versus telling us a story about the humanity and the tragedy of what happened to so many people. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly want to know your opinion. And I understand, and I, I appreciated that he said, there's so many different stories about Kashmir. Where do you find the truth? Mm -hmm. But I, I found almost that that became so big that the film itself became a metaphor mm. for truth. Like, pick your story of Kashmir and, and the... I did. I I knew it was coming. Uh, they went back to the rally. I'm like, okay, here comes Shiva's speech. And it's gonna piss her off, and she's gonna walk yeah. out, and we're gonna. And rather than the, the him, which in reality, what would happen is he would have been kicked out. Mm -hmm. There'll be people there who are gonna do what wouldn't happen in real life. They're gonna say, "Shut up, let him talk. I want to hear the truth now." It it just yeah. that that's what was part of the predictability. Yeah, it, it went through, and it, which is real sad because I actually thought he did a really good job. Uh, he in did a, his speech. His, that was his best moment. Yeah, he did. He, did a, he had a great moment. He there. had a really good speech, and it was he was he's a great. We saw it in uh, I think it was Family Man, right? He, he's a he's a really good actor. Really good actor. And but the fact that like people butt in, and I was like, I know what you're gonna say, and then you stood up. This is okay. Now I sit down. That was my line. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so there was stuff like that. Obviously, there was technical stuff that I knew they didn't have money for, and so I'm not really going to harp on that. Like, yeah, like some of the CGI. CGI and, stuff was pretty rough. Um, and then some right at the end. When at he the was, end, that was brutal. When he was shooting them, and that was they brutal. looked like they just literally sat down. No, it was bad. Yeah. God, they, it was, it they're was getting bad. shot, and the, the actors are turning to look at where they're falling. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was rough. Yeah. It, it missed... It, now so for, that, that takes away from what it should have done. Unless, if you've never seen Schindler's List, if you've never seen Saving Private Ryan, if you've never seen, I could go down a list of a bunch of films that depict brutality with r realism. Sardo Dam. Yeah. India. If you've never seen that, and this is the first time you've seen it, it would be impacting. I can see how there would be people who, if they've never seen anything of this magnitude, and this is their first exposure to it, it would be tough for them but for those of us who've seen this kind of story where there's a human tragedy or there's a there's a, a holocaust type of thing uh yeah i, I that that yeah. was that was difficult yeah technically and it seems like in the writing or in the direction whatever that this director wanted these actors to do certain things and it became a shtick for a lot of people like it the the, the bad guy in this might have had a lazy eye you guys could tell me if that's true or not but what the actor did, it just became a shtick. Anytime he said something menacing, 
It was the evil eye. It was. I agree. It was and really was like, rough. You this really this person really rough. And I, I just find it hard to believe if he actually did. But even if he did, let's say the 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 person he was portraying did have a lazy eye, it wouldn't act like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was intentional. Yeah, it was a hundred percent. This and is it was a cool. So, this is a cool moment, and then he did it a it thousand was so times. So over the top that it became almost comical, and that's the last thing you want. And it's and one thing. I actually thought most of the main cast did a really good job. They're all good actors. I think they've had to overcome an obstacle of dialogue a lot of times or certain things that obviously the director wanted. Yeah. Um, it, it happened to, you know, our, our lead uh, a few times. <laughs> and so it just goes to show you how important writing is. And maybe, like, if I was a Hindu or Kashmir Pundit or something, I'd be able to, like, overlook all this and be like, I'm just so happy this is being told. Right. And I am happy this is being I told. I am happy it's being but told. But I don't think it was... It, was, it didn't have the impact like even another Indian film of another genocide, Sarda Udam did. That didn't have that impact on me. And I, I actually was hoping, even though you know it was an awful moment that happened, I'm hoping that... Like the, I'm sure that happened. Obviously, he shot 25 people, and they oh, all went and things to like that's uh, the thing. Things like that and did happen all did of the, the time. The saw thing happened. Did yes, it? okay, that right. happened. And there were. I'm glad those are actually in the story. There are stories of, of people getting lined up by the hundreds by the river. Yeah, and just getting mowed down by the hundreds. But, I mean, that's what I meant by the scope of this thing. Yeah, but that the, wasn't depicted. The and the camps. The technical the scope aspect, of the camps and the thousands in the camps. The technical aspects of it. And the the unbelievability of like him doing his big bond speech before he kills them, it's just it it takes me out of it like crazy, because <laughs> I'm like I'm an actor I know what I know what he was told I know what he's doing and it hundred percent takes me out of the moment this is the crescendo yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to be like sobbing that he's murdering these people in front of me women children sawing people in half hi. Sorry, Andrani's go. You're going to see somebody coming. She, she went and got us some cappuccinos, bless her heart. Um, but, um, yeah, so those are the things I'm, I'm most frustrated with the film about, is, yeah. is the technical side of of the writing, the dialogue. Um, even there was some, there wasn't a ton, because I actually, I like that the director kept a lot of it, no score, because some moments, but even... Some moments of those dragged on, even. A little bit. Uh, I, the larger thing for me, as much as the technical aspects were, and I, I think it's because of it's because of the book. Um, well, I didn't read the book, and I... Right, the same. right. Well, and, and, and I, I, at one point, there's another part of this that I have a concern about. And again, it's a concern based, built from a platform of ignorance, guys. Um, my, my concern might be completely taken away in one educational moment where I understand, oh, okay. Um, but there's, um, there were moments where I was concerned with the main, the, the woman, um, Radhika, who is yeah. the, the, the person who's connected to our main bad guy and yeah. she's recruited him. Um, and when they were playing the songs at, right, right before the speech, I thought, are there, there's a potential for people to watch this. And if they already have come into this film with a, an opinion, not about the specificity of Kashmir, but if they have a particular bias toward a Muslim person, I'm really concerned that this is going to help them point to the places where they have a particular... Um, hatred and it's going to fuel it because of some of the ways it's depicted throughout this and it's not taking anything away from the reality of what happened um, and I, I just that really concerns me and I've, I, have, I have heard about some things that have been taking place in that regard and some of the framing of things I'm glad at the very beginning of the movie I don't know if you saw it he put up at the very beginning that this is dedicated to people being persecuted everywhere and he also had a disclaimer where he said, this is not supposed to be linearly factual. I'm incorporating things that have happened over many years. I'm also changing the names of some people. So he gave us that liberty. But there was enough framing of some things that... Um, it's, um, it's, for example, 
You don't want people walking away from watching Schindler's List, which is the example I can give. You want them walking away with a hatred for the Nazi evil that took place in the Nazis. You don't want them Not walking the away with an anger for the Germans. Yeah. 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 Obviously, we never want bigotry and hatred. Right. Exactly. And that's, um, what's, that's what concerns yeah. me. Yeah. Um, and we know those tensions in India are ridiculous. ridiculously high. And we know high. we know nothing of it. Once again, we're not. We know nothing of it. It's just the little we've been exposed to. That's where our hearts go in empathy. Um, but yeah, overall, even though I think there were a, a bunch of good moments, like I said, I think a lot of the actors had some good moments. Um, but I think the overall wise, I was a bit let down. Me at, too. At the impact. Yeah. That I was hoping to Me too. get from this film, especially from what I've heard. Me too. I was hoping it was going to um, be like the, grab my heart, like. Like, like even the most recent Shardo Odam that's what I was I was hoping for something as impactful as that Indian film I'm not even comparing it to a Hollywood film just a recent Indian film yeah. of another genocide that happened and I just didn't I just didn't feel I got that yeah and that was uh, a little disappointing yeah I agree me. And it, but at the same time look at, look at what you got you got two American dudes ignorant to stuff that's gone on in this part of the world wanting to learn about it and talk about it. So if you can take that away from it, then that's a wonderful thing. I would very much like to read that book. Yeah, you really should. Yeah. How yeah. long is it? It's 200 pages. Just mm. over 200 pages. Take me 200 days. It would ordinarily do that for me, but I couldn't stop reading it. Couldn't stop reading it. Couldn't stop reading it. Anyways, let us know what you thought about the film and why you hate us. Yeah. For and why we're Bollywood bootleg. Wait, Bolli hold on. Wait. Mm. Uh, no, yeah, this technically doesn't <laughs> fall into that category. So Anyways. it still supports the theory. Anyways, please let us know what you thought about the film and what should be the next film that we should watch. And other, if there's more informational books, articles, please, that we can, please send them to us. Please educate us. Um, so we can give them a read. Down below.